What's up everybody, this is CutCC, and today we're going to go over an interesting fighting game peripheral. Presenting the Mixbox. It is a controller that combines the independent directional arrow keys that you would find on a regular keyboard with the traditional attack buttons that you would find on a regular arcade stick. Just to be clear, this is not a sponsored video, so I'm not obligated to hype up the product or anything. However, what I will do is try to create an honest review that is fair, unbiased, and well-researched um, so that you guys can hopefully make an informed decision about whether or not you want to buy this or not. So we have lots to unpack. So let's get straight into the review. So let's begin with the aesthetics of the controller. The mix box has a uniform metal casing all around, similar to the metal that you would find on the safety bars of roller coasters. So it's very solid stuff and you know it's meant to last. The mix box is small, but compared to all the other fight sticks in my collection, it's pretty medium sized. So you can easily put it into your backpack or suitcase if you're planning on traveling to tournaments. I like that the wire has a detachable lid, I feel that that's good design, and the wire itself is very long. Most of us that play in tournaments or locals don't need that long of a wire, but if you're playing casually at home, the mix box will reach from the couch to the console pretty easily. I do feel that it's quite difficult to put the wires back inside the controller because while the compartment has a lot of space, the wire itself is very thick. It's much thicker than a lot of the other fight stick wires that I've seen, so this might slow you down a little bit when you're packing everything up. The mix box has a plexiglass cover in the front with four screws that are easily detachable and underneath the plexi is a thin sheet of glossy paper that the artwork is printed on. So what you can actually do is take some artwork of your own and put it on a template, print it out and slide it under the plexi. This is just me messing around with some printer paper designs but I recommend you guys go to a professional to get your artwork printed out. The mix box uses Cherry MX red key switches and Sanwa OBSF30 buttons. Out of the Cherry MX family, the Cherry MX Reds are the least tactile and clicky. However, it's very linear and consistent because due to the soft spring inside, the actuation force is very low, so you get a very smooth button press every single time. The Sanwa OBSFs are your standard 30mm buttons with a low profile bump height of 6mm. A lot of the real estate of the mix box is dedicated to that diagonal slant that you put your wrist on and the actual plexiglass area is efficient because it just has the arrow keys and the A attack buttons. All of the action and menu buttons are placed on the sides of the controller, so you'll never have to worry about accidental button presses. From left to right, the functions are Turbo, Share, PS Menu, Options, L3, Touchpad, and R3. The touch button essentially acts as a modifier on your other inputs, while the L3 and R3 buttons are the same as the two analog buttons that you would find on your PS4 pad. Unfortunately, there's no analog functionality or touch swipe functionality. Usually, for turbo buttons, you either have it on or off, but for the mix box, you have the ability to map individual buttons to have turbo functionality. So say for example, I want the 4 button to have rapid fire turbo. What I would do is hold down turbo and press the 4 button, and now 4 has turbo functionality. But 3, 1, and 2 are just normal buttons. If I want those to have turbo, I would also hold down turbo and then press the button that I want to map. And now that all the buttons have turbo, 1 plus 2 will also have turbo, 3 plus 4 will also have turbo, 1 plus 4 will have turbo, and 2 plus 3 will have turbo functionality. If I want to unmap those buttons, then I would hold down turbo and press the buttons that I want to unmap. Inside the wire compartment is a small button known as the SOCD switch. Now what SOCD stands for is Simultaneous Opposing Cardinal Directions. And this is just a fancy way of saying that back and forward are opposite directions and up and down are opposite directions. And we need to establish some rules for what happens when you uh, activate these opposing inputs at the same time. So the SOCD switch has two settings, a primary setting and a secondary setting. Each setting has different rule sets for those interactions. So let's explore those settings right now. So first we unplug our controller switch to the primary setting and then plug our controller back in. On the primary setting, back and forward always equals neutral. It doesn't matter if it's back plus forward or forward plus back. Up plus down will always equal up. It doesn't matter if it's down plus up or up plus down. Once again, let's unplug our controller, switch to the secondary setting and plug our controller back in. 
On the secondary setting, inputting opposite directions at the same time will always yield neutral. But if you were to press back first and then forward, you'll get forward. And pressing forward first and then back will get back. Similarly, pressing down first and then up will always equal up. And then pressing up first and then down will always equal down. So unless you're pressing two buttons at the same time, the second input will always override the first input. Now let's talk about execution on the mix box, starting with movement. Sidestep cancelling is obviously very intuitive using the arrow keys. However, what I've noticed is that my sidestep cancel speed starts to plateau very fast on the mix box, as opposed to pad or stick, where my sidestep cancels feel more fast and fluid. SOCD backdashing will net you the cleanest and most consistent backdash in the game, and this fact is further amplified if you decide to use two hands. But keep in mind, however, that while backdashing with two hands is easy, backdashing with one hand is not and it's gonna take a bit of practice, especially on the two-player side. And this is an important thing to take into account, because in a real match, you're not gonna to wanna to dedicate two hands to backdashing. So in the long run, it's more worthwhile to learn how to SOCD backdash with one hand. But once again, though, it's gonna take a lot of practice. Thanks to the keyboard layout of the mix box, backsway canceling is very easy, as is forward dash canceling, aka snake dashing. And honestly, I feel that it's worth it to get the mix box just to be able to see Fang do this. Nina's Hayashida step was something that I've always wanted to learn how to do, but it's very tricky on an arcade stick. However, as you can see right here on the mix box, it's quite reasonable. And it's very fun to do too, because all you're doing is establishing a rhythm and maintaining a balance between the plinking of down down back and tapping up. But just to reiterate, the reason why the Hayashida step looks so easy is because I'm doing it with two hands. In order to be proficient with one hand, it's going to take a bit of practice. I was always under the impression that electric sidestep was done by rotating the back corners of your stick clockwise or counterclockwise. But that's actually not the case. All you literally need to do is just press down and back to ESS into the foreground and press up and back to ESS into the uh, background. And the same is quite true for the two-player side as well. But now you're just doing down and forward to ESS into the foreground and up and forward to ESS into the background. So there's quite a lot of insights that you can gain from using the mix box when it comes to efficiency and how to do things the correct way. If you try to ESS with Kazuya and you tap forward instead of back, you can create some insane amounts of lateral movement with him on account of the fact that forward neutral is a misstep and a misstep is an auto sidestep into the foreground. Arguably the most difficult movement technique on the mix box is wave dashing because wave dashing requires fluidity of the quarter circle forward motion. And while the mix box has a lot of precision, it doesn't have the fluidity that you would find on an arcade stick or even a pad. You can certainly mitigate this a bit by using SOCDs. However, even with this, I still find myself having trouble performing wave dashes consistently. Performing instant while running techniques on the mix box is incredibly easy and consistent. I feel that like there's just something about the fact that you can use your index finger to tap forward three times that makes the keyboard layout perfect for executing instant while running moves. Single crouch dash moves are relatively easy to do. I find that it's tricky though if you try to do it like a pad or arcade stick by uh, ending the motion at down forward. I find it easier to think of it as forward down forward and then plus the move. Instant while standing is doable but it's a little bit tricky because after pressing down down forward you have to let go of both buttons at the same time. Otherwise you run the risk of the game accidentally recognizing your inputs as a quarter circle forward motion. But it is a pretty helpful skill to learn though, especially in combo situations where you have to turn around for back turn and then do instant while standing. In the case of Nina's instant while standing ones, you could either try to do down down forward neutral as cleanly as possible, or you could try using SOCDs, and you can do that by pressing down down forward, continue holding on to forward, and then pressing back one. This will give you a consistent neutral one. But unfortunately while this method is a little bit more consistent, it's a little bit too slow to be used practically in aerial juggles. Instant flicker cancel into wall standing is not exactly the same as instant wall standing, however the precision of the mix box still helps out a little bit in that area. Speaking of precision, the mix box shines when it comes to doing just frames, from Huarong's just frame skyrocket, to Heihachi's omen thunder godfist, and even to Jack's electric mecha godfist. You can focus more on the timing of the just frame 
rather than the precise and often awkward inputs of the just frame. The exceptions to this rule are Devogen and Heihachi's electrics, which is done by inputting 4 neutral down down forward 2. The fact that the down input is mandatory means that we have to play down down forward extremely fast and on the same frame as the 2 button, which theoretically sounds easy but realistically is very hard to do. When it comes to back 2 cancels, you can press back and forward almost instantaneously because the keyboard layout doesn't have any travel. So you can think of Lee's back 2 forward almost as one input. And this simplifies your thought process, which makes it less likely to drop your back 2 combos. Being able to go from back to forward, or from forward to back very quickly, is helpful. However, there are some cases where it will backfire. For example, running up and doing back 2, 1, 1 plus 2 after a tailspin is very difficult on a mix box, because it requires a lot of starter step cancels, which is uncomfortable using arrow keys. Performing a lot of DSS cancels seems simple enough, however, I actually find it a little bit difficult. But this could just be personal preference because when I perform DSS on a stick, I like to slide my inputs between back and forward, and it's so fluid that I don't even think about it anymore. But on a mix box, it's a little bit more apparent that I'm jumping from back to forward, and that's a little bit jarring for me. However, with a little bit of practice, I'm able to get used to performing DSS on a mix box. Performing down down forward moves is easy enough, and it's even easier if you're already crouching. However, there's one important thing to remember. Say for example you want to perform a slide on the mix box, well once you get into crouching, you cannot hold down back. This is because down back plus forward equals SOCD neutral. So the only way to get a slide to come out is by releasing one of your fingers from back and then only crouching by holding down and then from there you can input down forward. Having this presence of mind is also important if you play characters that don't have a while standing or crouch cancel launcher. For characters that have a force crouch down forward launcher, Anytime that you attempt to punish, make sure that if you are holding down back, momentarily lift up your finger so that you are only crouching by holding down, and then from there, slide your finger to down forward. Finally, let's talk about circular motion inputs on the mix box. The input buffer on Beast's Half Circle Back 3 is so lenient that you could literally press forward, down, and back, and the game will still recognize it as Half Circle Back. The same is kind of true for pretzel motions like Raging Storm, although I am doing this in isolation. I haven't tested how practical it is to cancel into Raging Storm on a mix box. I can confirm that doing double quarter circle forward motions and canceling into double quarter circle forward motions is pretty feasible on a mix box. And here's a clip of me performing quarter circle forward, quarter circle back, and Dragon Punch style motions with Akuma, as well as canceling into quarter circle forward, quarter circle back, and DP motions. I find that the dragon punch motions are the hardest because it's like a crouch dash but you have to end up down forward and you have to do it extremely fast. Quarter circle forward motions for Tekken characters can be pretty easy once you get used to it. Just make sure that after you press down down forward to release your finger from holding down or else you'll always get a down forward. Once you get the hang of that, you should be all set. For Tekken characters that have half circle forward, half circle back, and command throw type motions, mastering their moves will actually be quite difficult on a mix box because your inputs have to be fast and fluid, and you don't get the same type of input leniency like these. So just keep that in mind, there are some characters where their circular motions will take a considerable amount of practice. Alright, so to wrap everything up, is the mix box as accurate and well built as other controllers on the market? Yes. Is the mix box a viable means to play Tekken? Yes. Is execution noticeably easier on the mix box? For that one, I'm gonna have to say no. At least when you look at the whole picture, no. The reason being is because, like other peripherals, pad, fight stick, hitbox, the mix box has its own pros and cons and it comes with its own unique set of quirks and executional challenges. So don't think that you're gonna buy the mix box and all of a sudden become an execution god all in one day. The good news however is that if you're a keyboard player, chances are you've already overcame those executional challenges a long time ago. So transitioning from the keyboard to the mix box should be quite seamless. And even if you're just getting into this control scheme for the first time, just know that with hard work and determination, you can be quite proficient at using the mix box and unlocking this controller's potential. Uh, so yeah, that concludes my review of the mix box. If you guys feel like I left anything out or you want to see more mix box related videos in the future, let me know down in the comments below and I'll try to address them. This is CutCC signing out. Until next time.